guys, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel again. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to reassemble your 2240 because you probably took it apart and can't figure out how to put things back together and you have a hard time following diagrams. That can happen among many people. It's not a bad thing, but that's what I'm here for to help you out. So this is not a modification video in any way, shape or form. We're not doing power mods or any of that sort of stuff. We're just taking a stock pistol and we're putting it all back together from scratch again. Okay, so we're going to start with the valve. Now, you've got two holes here on the, on the tube on the bottom. And one of them is going to be for the screw. Okay, and it's a very small screw with a flathead. Alright, so we want to make sure it goes in the right direction. So we want the screw hole to face up. And we're just going to slide this in until the screw hole comes to the front hole. Okay, we don't want to go to the back hole because it ain't going to work. Then, I would suggest a magnetic tip screwdriver if you have one. Uh, it comes in real handy for being able to hold things a little bit better. And we're just going to put this right back in like this. Now, you don't have to reef on this to get it snug. But you do have to make sure that it's in there reasonably snug. Just don't reef the daylights out of it because you could strip the threads. You could possibly even break the screw if you put too much force. And you don't really need that force. Okay? So you'll notice if you shake the tube, that valve is still slopping around right now. And it, it's not going to once things are back together. But there is a little bit of a gap space here and that's okay. And you can see our transfer port from the valve is at the transfer port up top here. Okay? So next thing we want to do is we want to put our hammer back in. Now you've got the hammer and you've got the hammer pin. Now there's a couple different types of hammers. This is the one that's one of the newer style hammers and I have one of the original style ones and it doesn't have a cutout. Why there's a cutout is because Crossman actually started making the breeches, uh, for the steel breeches, to go for a rear screw that's hidden underneath and of course they still make the front load style breech which is a common breech that you'll order and so you see that screw and a lot of people were kind of annoyed with that system because it would still catch the skirt of the pellet or could catch it and um, it's a little bit of an annoyance to say the least. I'm just trying to locate where I threw that original hammer because it's in here someplace. I have no idea where I put it. I thought I left it out, but apparently I did not. Anyways, so. Well, let's. Ah, there it is. Found it. So this is the original style hammer, as you can tell it's round all the way around and it's got some heft to it. If you weighed these up, this new style hammer actually weighs slightly less. But because of the rear screw, the hammer, this old style hammer, it's kind of useless if you're going to use the new style breech with the back load screw that gets hidden. So you're going to have to order a hammer if that's the breech you end up with. And it's kind of hard to know which one you're going to end up with. It depends on what they grab out of the bit, right? Because the part numbers apparently didn't change for the breeches. Anyway, so we're going to use the new one because eventually I'll probably put a steel breech on here. And whatever one I get, it doesn't matter. I still got all this extra gap space. And by the way, a lighter hammer also does, now I'll let you know this, it actually does help with increasing the power a little bit because it changes the detonation timing but it can also at the same time lower your power it kind of just depends on how the rest of the gun is for the internals of the valve and how weak springs are in the valve uh, area and so on so it can go either way but again this is not a modification video these are all um, the stock parts I just wanted to show you that original style all right so we want to get our hammer put in here, so it's going to go with the pinhole facing the top where the transfer port is. And we're just going to slide it to this little notch area that's a little bit wider, okay? 
All right, so now that that's in, we're good to go. So the next thing we want to do is we want to put the handle on. Now when you took this handle off, just remember this little spring here, underneath it is a little kind of teeny weeny weeny detent ball. It's like a little ball bearing. And you can order them from Crossman if you happen to lose it, but that's where you got to be careful when you took the gun apart that you were very careful to remove the handle and not have things go this way. Because otherwise you might have misplaced that bearing somewhere. Okay. So, and a lot of guys, they do actually remove the safeties from their 2240s because they just don't like safeties. Okay, so now that we got the back end even, we've got this facing here where we need it. We're going to take the longer of the two screws, okay, and it's going to go in here. And we're going to just simply get it into place. And if you've got it lined up right, it should just start threading right in. Here, as though we did not get it completely straight in. It can be a little finicky. I actually do this better left handed. If you're finding you're having a little bit of an issue there, just kind of eyeball things to line it up. I think we got it right there. Make sure you hold the handle and the tube together. Now don't go tight tight right away because we still got to get this back hole to line up properly so there will be a little bit of shift movement. So just back that screw off just a little tiny bit so it's just a little loose. Okay. So that's in. Good to go. We want the hammer spring now and we want to pull the trigger to make sure that the hammer moves forward. Get our spring in place. Put the back cap on. Again, hold this as, as straight as you can. Make sure your hole is lined up. And we're going to want that short screw. Alright, so now we're going to take a little bit bigger of a flat blade screwdriver. And we're going to make that really snug. Okay, now we're going to go to the front. Same thing with the screwdriver. And really snug. Okay, this is where you can actually put some pressure down on the screw and make it really nice and snug. Okay, so voila. We've got that going. So now we need our transfer port seal. Okay, it doesn't matter which direction you put this seal in. Now when you did remove it, hopefully you didn't damage anything. Otherwise you may have to order a new one. But you just gently put it back in there so it sits flush on top. Now we're going to put the transfer port in. Now the transfer port has a tall side and a very shallow side. And the tall side goes up into the barrel. So we want to have the shallow side down. Like so. Okay. Now comes the real fun part. And that's the barrel and the breech. Okay. So one of the tricks I do is I push and I lock that forward. Okay. So it kind of sticks in the barrel a little bit. And then this way I line up the transfer port hole as evenly as I can here. And this is going to allow me some wiggle room too. And with our hammer forward and our bolt forward, we have all this airspace at the back that we can just simply slide it into place, like so. And then we're going to hold it and we're going to cock the gun. 
And then we're going to take our breech screw, the small screw that's got the little tiny Allen key that you need to use. That's going to go in there. And we're going to just push down gently. Now we're not going to tighten this all the way at first, okay? We just want to get it down there enough so that it holds the breech down. Okay, now we're going to hold back here, pull back, pull trigger, gently release. Now we can put our rear sight on. And if the cap hole is lined up properly. This should just go right in without any difficulty. Now, this rear sight, you don't want to torque it down really super hard because you're going to need to loosen it anyways to go left and right to adjust your windage. So when you do go to adjust your windage, just loosen it up just enough that it can slide back and forth and then you can hold it where you need it. Alright, so next thing we need, of course, is our barrel band. And I've got a, actually a brand new one here. And we're going to slide it on. Now you'll notice that there's a little divot, okay, on the top of your barrel. So what we want to do is we want to actually remove the top screw, leave it on the key. And we want to line up that hole so that we actually get to see the divot. So we don't want to make a new divot, we just want to see old divot. Which should be right about there. This is going to help make it easier to realign the barrel so that the barrel sits left to right properly. And to know if you've got that in there right, leave a little bit of slack and then see if it will we go back and forth into the hole. We've got a little bit too loose. So we're going to just snug that a little bit. And yep, that's locking it in. So now we want to just snug this up. Now that's the one thing about these um, alloy barrel bands. You can't go really super tight on the Allen keys. Okay, on the Allen screws, the grub screws. Um, you just need to go in enough that you can lock it and just a little bit of snugness. They're not going to back back off on you. Okay, now then you want to take the gun and you want to put the screw cap in for your CO2 bottle. Now make sure of course there's no gas in the gun because what you're going to do here is you got to point, you have to point the muzzle at yourself. But what you want to do is you want to get this to sit vertical so that it's straight up and down. And you're going to use that as your eyeballing center point so that you get the left and right here just even. Okay? Because you still got, even though this is tight and this is locked, you still have that, that part where it can go too far left or too far right. So what I like to do is just kind of wiggle things around a little bit making sure that this is lined up so you can even turn the gun upside down and line up the center line of the molding here on your uh, finger guard with the uh, slot in the thing and that looks about that looks about right there turn it back over and try and draw an imaginary line with your eye on the barrel I would say probably somewhere about there. And then hold that firmly in place. And then just snug this screw up. Just like this. You don't have to use the long end. Just snug it up like that. Give it a check. That looks good. Now you're going to look down the center line of the gun. What I usually like to do is kind of feel 
the edges to see if I'm feeling the same amount of metal on side to side. And I'm also looking to, that looks pretty good like that. Now the barrel band could look like it's cockeyed a bit. And if that's the case, it could be that your alignment may be out a bit. So all you gotta do is just simply loosen off the bottom screw. So, I think we're okay there. Not the perfectest looking barrel band. I'm wondering if this one was actually even cut right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to confirm that theory. Because sometimes you can get a wonky barrel band too. So this is an older barrel band. Yeah, that looks a little more reasonable actually. Doesn't seem to be... This is a little bit of fiddling that you're going to need to do, probably. It happens. So if I lock that there. Yeah, that's a fair amount of slop there. Wonder if, let's recheck this one. See where the little divot marks are on the back here? They go toward you. They don't face forward. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to retake this out. I'm going to relocate that divot again. centered there. That actually looks really good there. So before I tighten this up all the way, I'm actually going to get a front sight because I want to make sure that the left and right on the front sight is going to align with my rear sight properly, which is also going to tell me how close or how far off these are actually sitting right now. So what I like to do is just pop it pressure fit and then just hold that barrel tight so it can't move. Give it a few taps. Yep, that actually looks really good. So I don't even have to, uh, if I just leave it right about there, it should lock up just perfect. Actually, uh, that's squaring up. So if you look through the notch here to the bottom edges, um, you'd be looking at the little groove cuts here on either side. Kind of square that up, and if it's looking like it's sitting nice and square, which this one looks like it's really good, and then we're fine. We should be all right. So, just a little bit more of a snugness. You'll know if you went too tight, especially with that bottom screw, because the cap is going to have a hard time, uh, well, can have a hard time threading in, actually. Because some people have actually gone too far, or they didn't get the notch lined up here, they're too far ahead, they added too much pressure, and that'll actually crimp on the tubing. So, very important that you make sure everything sits right. 
I'll just snug that up the last of it. That's on nice and snug. Good to go there. That's it. So we have a fully reassembled 2240. It's very easy to do. I understand that prints can sometimes be a little tedious to follow. I get that. I mean, hey, I wasn't perfect at reading diagrams either in the beginning. Many, 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 many years ago. Um, but this is probably the simplest gun that Crossman has probably ever built. Let alone any other manufacturer I've come across. This is probably the simplest gun there is. But... Um, Anyway, so we're reassembled. We know that it cocks. Pull the trigger. It's fine. You know? So, there is your full reassembly of the Crossman 2240 pistol. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll do the best I can to help you guys. I have plenty of air gun videos on my channel. I used to make mod parts at one time for a living. Um, but I don't do it anymore. I'm hoping that I can get back into it eventually. Um, we'll see how things go down the road, but right now, hey, you know, we're doing what we're doing. But, um, in the meantime, there you go. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I know if the lighting may have been a little bit off, that's why I tried to do as much close-up as I could. Um, to, to see what I can do to compensate. It's kind of like getting dark out right now and we don't have like optimal perfect lighting in the house either. Uh, so I did the best I could with this. So hopefully that helps everybody out without any issues. But like I said, if you have questions, feel free to ask. I'll do the best I can to answer. One last thing though before we go, I want to talk to you about steel breeches. When you go to a steel breech upgrade on this gun, it's not a modification where you're adding power, but um, you're adding a lot of quality, you're adding a bit more weight, you can use different optics without any issues. Um, you will not have to use the barrel band ever again um, if you go to the steel breech because the steel breech, um, a good majority of your barrel sits inside that steel breech. So when it's locked in place, that's it, it's solid and it sets itself up nice and true, providing the breech was made properly. You'll know, you'll find out. But um, you can leave it as a free floater with a seven inch barrel, okay? Longer barrels, you might wanna add the barrel band, but on a stock seven inch barrel, there is no need for the barrel band when you use those breeches. And the breech for the Crossman 1322 and the 2240 is the exact same breech. Uh, in fact, the breech itself is exactly the same for the 1377, uh, the 1740, and many other 22X, uh, and actually some of the 17X guns too, uh, that are 177 cal. And the only difference Crossman really did other than, of course, screw mounting, and you know, you would have either a slot cut for an LPA or Williams sight or whatever. Um, the only other difference is, is the probe for the caliber. But the main breech itself, you could take one off of a 1740, throw in, um, or even off of a 2260, a steel breech and throw it onto a 2240 or a 1377, just change the probe for the caliber that you need. And that's it. So, as long as you're within 177.22. Anyway, a little bit of extra for you. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.